Good morning, good morning, good morning. Today is day two of the arena open. Yesterday, with what feels like about six hours to go before the deadline for this event, I don't really know why I was playing qualifiers. It was not my intention to play in this. I did not practice draft at all. But eh, I wanted to play high stakes steel for no particular reason. And then on what was going to be my last bullet before I was going to go to bed, I had my opponent, who had me dead on board, just not block a lethal attack, and then die. So now I'm here, when as far as I can tell, the universe said I wasn't supposed to be. Uh, so it is now much, much, much too early in the morning for any sane human being to be awake, which is why I'm awake, and we're going to be playing draft now, I guess. So, let's jump into it. Uh, the usual caveats for competitive events apply. I don't think that I am going to turn on a delay for this event, because that ends up making chat kind of barren, even if I'm not looking at chat. Which, I don't know. So we'll talk about games after they happen. I'll still do live commentary in the moment. I'm just not going to look at chat until I'm done with stuff, is all. So we have our first draft. And in this one, Herd Migration is definitely a very powerful card that incentivizes us to go into five colors and then start picking lands aggressively. Compared to that, none of the other cards are, like, super amazing. I would probably take Protect the Negotiators as my second favorite card here, I think. But, yeah, no complaints about Herd Migration. So we're unlikely to wheel Idyllic Beachfront. We're unlikely to wheel Root Wallow or Vine Shaper Prodigy. I'm not expecting much out of this pack, depending on what our primary colors are. Maybe... Maybe we will the Prodigy in between Terra Sunder and Root Walla. Most likely we'll get the Sea Scavengers back, though, is my suspicion. Next pack. We have... Gaia's Might is a card that I actively like, and usually will play as many copies of as I can. But, in all likelihood, we would prefer a dual land. <sighs> Are we supposed to prioritize forest dual lands over non-forest dual lands? Or am I supposed to prioritize non-forest dual lands over forests? I feel like this is something I would know if I had practiced to draft more, but as I have not, I do not. I'm going to opt to take the forest land, see where that gets us. Threats undetected, scout the wilderness, which is fine, choking miasma and erg. I do like erg and choking miasma. Although both are double black, which is scary for a five-color deck. Could also take the Telerian Terror. We could take Scout the Wilderness, but I think I like Scout the Wilderness less than I like just taking a green-red dual land. Terror really is a fascinating option that might make sense. I'm just not familiar enough with drafting this archetype to comfortably take it in a position where I could just be taking a dual land instead. Here, interesting choice between Deathbloom Gardener, which we actually have a use for because Herd Migration does not need us to have seven lands. It just needs us to have domain lands. Or we could take Tribute to Urborg. Hmm. 
I'm actually really uncertain which of these is supposed to be correct. I think I'm supposed to take tribute to Urborg, which also kind of makes me think that earlier I might have preferred to take the Serpent in that case. Here we get an interesting choice between Essence Scatter, Dual Land, Artillery Blast, but Artillery Blast really isn't my favorite piece of removal in general. And Essence Scatter to me has less value than a Dual Land, so Dual Land it is. Okay, Joint Exploration, which kind of works with the Herd Migration idea kind of works with the Tribute to Urborg idea. But it does require two colors to do what it does. Finds Herd Migration, but comparatively, I think we're looking at it or probably the Sunlit Marsh. Oh, oh, oh wait, wait. Okay, I guess we're not picking that. I was staring at the clock and thought that that clock said we had 10 seconds left to pick when it picked for me. I'm very clearly just too early in the morning here. All right, well, I was gonna pick the dual land, but I didn't know which dual land to pick. Here, I guess we take the geothermal bog. I could take the salvaged mana worker. Can I even use this? Not really. Oops. Phyrexian Espionage is pretty good, Sea Scavenger is pretty reasonable, especially when we have a herd migration that we're incentivized to get to. That's so much more powerful than everything else. And I am a little scared about potentially running out of... Well, not running out, but not ending up with enough on-curve playables. Whether Sea Scavengers is better on curve playable than Divination, I don't know. Wow. Protect the Negotiators. Actually wheeling, but unlikely that we actually end up with enough creatures to successfully take it. So left with a choice between another dual land or Sea Scavengers in a position where we haven't seen any of the actual domain payoffs. I'm going to then, in that case, cut lands because it feels like somebody else took the payoffs in the first couple of packs and left us taking many of the lands. So I'd rather try to squeeze somebody into taking lands later on. Here, yeah, I'm happy to just take a sea scavengers. It's medium, but it's on curve. Take up the shield is actually pretty strong, but I haven't found any large selections of creatures or I haven't found any of the green large creatures yet. So I guess I take Scout the Wilderness. Hmm. This would actually be good with that thing we just passed, but I guess that's for somebody else to have because I really want somebody else going into red-white equipment. Because if somebody else goes into red-white equipment, then uh, you then that somebody is not competing with me for five color good stuff. And we're not actually playing against the people in our pods. And if that's ever the case, then your incentive is to have everybody in the pod have the best deck possible. You have no incentive to cut them in any way. You, wow, okay, well, I guess I get joint exploration. You have only the incentive to give them the clearest messaging possible. And here we have a choice between Nimata, Sojourner, or Sentry. There's also Phyrexian Missionary, but we have no creatures worth getting back, so I'd rather just take a good creature over that. Uh, Sojourner's tempting, but probably won't wheel. We're probably going to wheel either the Sentry, maybe the Lookout, which I'm not sure this deck can actually play, possibly the Acolyte, which I'm not sure we want to play. But I think I have to take Nevada. This card's just kind of too good to not take. I feel. Here we could have a second terror. Which between the joint exploration or we could have had a second terror. Here we can have our first terror. Which would almost be tempting. I don't think I want fires of victory. 
I don't want to have to try to fix red if I don't have to. Not when Urborg Repossession is probably just as good. But I do also kind of think maybe the Terror is just a better pick than the Repossession in this position, especially with me not really having creatures. Eh, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to go for it. I probably should have gone for it earlier. The big thing in my mind is that if I end up picking up that domain divination that turbo fills the graveyard, then some number of that would go a long way towards fueling terror. On that note, we have a very good 3-3 three, three for 3 that I love. But we could also take a cut down, which is a pretty premium removal spell. And I think I like a pretty premium removal spell if we're going to try to do this Talarian Terror thing and hope we pick up one more Talarian Terror to go with it. It certainly makes Scout the Wilderness less embarrassing. I'm assuming I have a dual land over Talarian Terror, which is probably fine. At the moment, it looks like we are blue, black, splashing green, and then splashing the other domain colors, which... Okay, that kind of works. Here, tail swipe, interesting, but we also lack for creatures to use it with, so I'm probably just supposed to take Vine Shaper Prodigy. Tail Swipe becomes interesting if we get some of the cheaper domain creatures, but uh, Vine Shaper Prodigy is not embarrassing, and Herd Migration is such a powerful card that we have definitely some incentive to try to get out the... get the fixing to find it more often. Childress Codex has impressed me in Sealed, but that's kind of just in Sealed. I don't know if I'm supposed to like it here, but I also like none of these other cards particularly much. I don't even know if I like the first Scout the Wilderness. I don't... Okay. Okay. Uh, I don't know if I'd ever want to play a second. Here, I don't really want any of these cards, although somebody... <laughs> He's going to enjoy having a second Aster, maybe. I don't want to play a white card, but Stall for Time is definitely the best of the cards here. I could hypothetically play Slimefoot Survey, I just don't want to. Hmm... Pixie Illusionist has definitely unimpressed me. I think we just take the 3-3 three, three for 3. It is a creature that is on curve. I like me a 3-3 three, three for 3 stat-wise. Academy Wall is actually kind of interesting to me here. I don't know if it's something that I'm excited to play, but it is something that actually kind of works with the Terror and the Herd Migration. Digs us towards the Herd Migration, puts stuff in the graveyard for the Terror. Digs us towards the Terror. I still don't think I actually like Slimefoot's Survey very much. I'm willing to play a Snare Spinner for the sideboard. Pass somebody the heirloom to go with that red white deck. There's a possibility tide or that tide turner is something I'm actually interested in. I <sighs> Bog Badger is a card I like better than Splatter Goblin, but I think I'm picking Splatter Goblin because I'm looking like I'm having enough three drops already. 
None of these are for me. None of these are for me. And... Rada's Firebrand is almost technically a domain spell, but I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to take the Aeronaut over it. The Aeronaut's pretty cool, generally. And very good in this deck, generally. Might need more dual lands since I didn't actually wind up getting any in the last pack. Might want more removal spells and might want more top end creature. Could also go with some number of 4-4 four, four lava axe with reach for 5 mana. Haven't seen a single one of those and that makes me sad. Erborg Lurgoif. Don't think we like that. Frostfist Strider is definitely a reasonable card. I'm not actually sure if we're supposed to prioritize that over Sojourner when we're just strongly in these colors, though. I hope one of the two dual lands wheels, but don't expect it to. Although maybe somebody else takes the codex at this point. Your creatures, right? Yeah. No, I think it's supposed to be Sojourner here, which is sad that we're not taking the Strider, but I think we just need Sojourner. <sighs> I don't really like Rada very much. I'd like more fixing, and Contaminated Aquifer is fixing for our early colors that we enjoy, so I think we're just taking that. We've already got a snare spinner for the sideboard anyway. Ooh, okay. Now here's an interesting pick. Telerian Geyser, which is a fantastic magic card. Or Hydromancer, of which we really only have Terror and Sojourner that are worth copying. Huh. I kind of think Hydromancer is probably just something we want a lot less than Geyser. I don't strongly need another red source, so I think we just take the Geyser. Uh, I don't like Sacred Peaks for the same reason I kind of don't like the Geothermal Bog. We are not a deck that's actually strongly going to be able to use any of the mana it makes. I could take Negate, I guess. Potentially sideboard. Hopefully not have to mainboard. What do we do here? Impulse isn't embarrassing, other than the part where it's a tiny bit embarrassing. Coral Colony with no Defender theme. Just lightly mill the opponent? I don't think so. I think I'm probably taking Impulse here. Did it just give me another Contaminated Aquifer instead of that Impulse that I just drafted? That's very strange. I guess I'll take Gaia's Might? <sighs> yeah, we probably want a Vine Wall here over a second contaminated aquifer, right? Probably wrong. Probably take the actual second contaminated aquifer. Do I have enough black fixing? Did I choking miasma? Did I say I didn't want geothermal bog earlier? That's kind of wrong. I don't think I have enough black to try to play choking miasma. So we'll just play more bog badger. So we could take a second Codex. Do I have enough removal to do that? I don't think that I have enough removal to justify doing that. I do think I'll probably play Ness and Scatter, though, maybe? Maybe not. Maybe I'm supposed to take the Splatter Goblin there? Hmm. We'll take the Rada and debate it, although my suspicion is that we will not play it. Similar story for the Relic. Uh, 
All right. So we didn't get as much domain payoff as I might hope in the terms of creatures. <sighs> da, 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 da. Yeah, okay. There's the impulse in our sideboard and one less contaminated aquifer in the actual deck. That's what I thought was happening. Probably not playing the stall for time. It gives us two white sources. And two red sources. So actual domain might weirdly be kind of tricky. <sighs> doodly doo doodly doo 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 doo. I don't know that I love this. Do not have a huge number of creatures. Means I probably want more two drops at the bare minimum. I want Tide Turner. Eh, maybe I do. It's not an encouraging amount of top end necessarily, nor is it an entirely impressive amount of removal either. This deck actually doesn't do like a ton. Kinda wanna play a Tide Pool Turtle. I think I might actually be that desperate. Yeah. Uh, dun 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 dun. I should probably be cutting a three drop. I should probably be cutting Scout the Wilderness. I don't think that's a card I love. I do think that I'm okay with Tidepool Turtle. And I think I prefer Tidepool Turtle over Rada. <sighs> Here. This just doesn't seem like we have a huge amount of ability to remove our opponent's big things or to kill our opponent. So I feel like I am slightly worried. Blue sources are eight, green sources are. Seven. Oh, that's not good. Black sources at five. Oh, dear. You know, because we only actually ended up with three dual lands in our primary colors but I don't think I have any capacity to fix any of that. Good news is that most of our color requirements in terms of actual spells are pretty light. Oh my, oh my, oh my. I think this is what we're going with, though. I think this be the hope. All right, team. Uh, let's hope for good herd migration draws. I'm assuming we have to 3 and 0 this thing. Oh, wow. Yeah. All right. Game plan. That's serpents and that's herd migrations. And that's a wall that hopefully encourages both. I'm actually wondering if I don't impulse on turn one here. Oh, well, turn two. What? Because if we save this impulse, we can actually play it later and then discard something off the academy wall. Ooh, all right. All right! I like this whole opponent not doing anything thing. Will I also missing land drops while I set up every of my stuff? Look at that. Uh, I could impulse here so that I have a chance to play a tap land, but I think I want to hold up essence scatter anyway. We can just play a tap land on a later turn. 
Okay, okay. Opponent's not having a great time. I feel for them, but also I feel happy for me. I definitely want to discard an instant or sorcery here and not a land. Would I rather get rid of Tribute or Geyser? I'd probably rather get rid of Tribute. Just hold on to Scatter Geyser. Hmm. So this is actually really interesting to me because what I kind of want to do is take the Gaia's Might and then just discard that to Academy Wall later on whenever I Essence Scatter or Geyser or something. I think that's actually what I'm supposed to do, because I don't think that I want to try to tap out into the mana they've been holding up this entire time for a Joda's journal when we don't even have real domain. If my opponent's discarding a hand size, I don't really want to try to tap out into this open blue mana with terror either. But they didn't Essence Scatter Academy Wall. I'm not sure exactly what that's supposed to say to me. But, yeah, I'm not going to do anything for as long as they're discarding a hand size. Our terror is immune to everything other than essence scatter. There's a card that I can essence scatter. Draw a card. Badger. Eh. I don't actually need to discard Gaia's Might now. And I'm not really interested in casting the Herd Migration until I find one of my two off-color sources. So I kind of think that I just ship the island. And just keep density of action. It is not one of the off-color sources. In that case, I think I don't even play Contaminated Aquifer. Unless I really want to just cast Herd Migration to put three threes into play next turn. Maybe I do really just want to do that, though. Huh. Yeah, alright. Let's just do that. At this point, I guess we're just trying to kill the opponent. Sojourner. Yeah, that's a big one. Can't kick this, but returning the Sojourner feels like the right move, probably more so than playing the Herd Migration, right? Then we get to play the Bog Badger. Alternatives, kick Bog Badger, attack with Telerium Terror. Nah, don't like that. Draw a card, discard a land. Ooh. Nomada's fun. Is it better than Bog Badger? Probably. Considering I'm probably going to push Gaia's Might through the Sojourner next turn. Although the opponent also has action. Bite down. Poor Namada. Bye-bye. Alright. Well... The Gaia's Mightiest. Draw a card. Ooh, okay, so... <sighs> I can play the Wooded Ridge Line this turn and then play the Tide Pool Turtle. And get Herd Migration for four next turn, or I can just Herd Migration for three. I'm probably just supposed to Herd Migration for three here and then kick Bog Badger next turn. It's not quite lethal, but it's good. Alright, so we're gonna hope the opponent just doesn't do anything again for a really long time. That seems like a good recipe. I don't have good removal for large creatures, which appears to be what my opponent's on. Makes me wonder if I want Urtai's Scorn. We managed to hold up stuff that game, but... Makes me not want Snare Spinner, at the very least. Could play Colossal Growth.
Could play Urtai Scorn, could play Stall for Time, but I don't think my color fixing for Stall for Time is good enough. Plus three, plus three, let's Nemata fight Sojourner. We see anything worth negating out of them? Not really. It's too bad Tide Turner doesn't fix colors. I'd be more willing to splash something like Colossal Growth or Scout the Wilderness if I could actually pay the kicker cost. <sighs> Same story with Stall for Time, except that's not necessarily a kicker cost. Eh, I think this is still where I'm at. Uh, I'm not sure I'm in love with how medium the deck feels. Okay. Colors and mana and good cards. Okay, okay. I can play Tide Turner on two. And Ridge Line on three, hold up Essence Scatter for a four drop. Soaring Drake's a little annoying. Okay, now am I supposed to... Oh, I am holding up Urtai's Scorn off of the Tide Turner if I want to. Okay, so I can still play Ridge Line here. Well, we got Counter Spells. Mm, I don't want to play into nothing. I don't even have a way to get the nail through the Soaring Drake at the moment. I only have a way to stop the Soaring Drake from attacking me. But, in all likelihood... So they could remove a spell. Well, this is a 2-4, right? Yeah, so they probably just ignore it. I think we just attack. Hold up Essence Scatter. Maybe that's wrong. Maybe I was supposed to hold up Urtai's score in this turn, so the next turn I could nail plus Essence Scatter. And it wasn't worth the one damage. Probably wasn't worth the one damage. Alright, well, our 2 4 flyer is holding down the world. Think we just go ahead and bounce the Drake? Get in with Nail, who is not currently active in the domain sense. Which gives the opponent an incentive to not block. Well, we're happy to be getting rid of all of these. Gaia's Might is probably what we want to keep on top, or should we be Sea Scavengers? Which essentially just gives us a nail hit and then gives us something to start attacking with. Guess we want to do the Gaia's Might then. Oh, I can get rid of it with the Joint Exploration, though. So I don't actually need to draw it. Wow, okay. Oh, right, 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 because they figure they can block with the Soaring Drake. Sure. Ooh, scary. Yeah, I don't want my opponent having a 5-5. Five, five. Opponent's unlike the exact same deck I am. Okay, do we want a joint exploration to get rid of the Gaia's Might? Probably not. And I'd like to... Do I even want to kicker this? I might not want to kicker this. I might not care about kickering this. I might just want to play it for the normal here, because I want a chance at hitting a white land. Okay. That's fascinating. So if I take the Codex, I can't draw this turn. Because it'll cost one to activate. But if I take the Beachfront, then I'm one mana short of playing the Codex. But I want to take the Beachfront because I want to hit with Nail, I'm pretty sure. And then we just play the Turtle. Maybe I didn't want the Codex at all in that case? Yeah, 
Yeah, because we are not taking the Codex, we are definitely taking the Herd Migration. And then we play our Giant Turtle. Okay! We got a plan! Opponent having trouble setting up domain. Ooh, okay. At this point, I don't think that I need to do anything more to force Nail through. If I attack with Nail, they just block and it makes me Gaia's Might, which isn't very exciting. I think we just play the land, play Herd Migration, get a bunch of beasties. And then hold back defensive-like for the time being. Yep, I'm sure they want something off of that lookout. Tribute. Okay. Well, you can find something off that lookout, opponent. They take not the essence scatter and then concede. Wee! We did it, chat! Alright, what did I miss? Is this on a delay or is he not reading chat? I, I'm trying not to read chat while I'm playing. Since it's a competitive event and I don't want that to be considered an advantage. Or at least vaguely competitive. Not competitive enough for me to feel like I need to set up a delay for my own protection, because... It's only money on the line, not qualifications for anything. Reading chat is like the opposite of an advantage. Eh, you know, I, I read... I know there are people who say that. Feeling the need to be an entertaining streamer is a disadvantage. If you feel like you are being uh, a performer and that interacting with chat is a way in which you need to be mindful of performing. But I kind of, like... I'm not that good at my job if this is a job. <laughs> so, I mostly just, you know, read chat, comment on chat, and then get prompted to think better about my plays by chat, which, if you look at it that way and you're into that automatic habit, uh, I think that makes you a better player. You can use chat as an advantage. You just have to be conditioned to, and I don't actually think that doing that makes you a better streamer necessarily. <laughs> Is a mere Jund Reanimator has become complete trash and standard? Um, I don't think Jund Reanimator is as well positioned as I thought. Mostly the mana base is really tough. Uh but it doesn't help that I think that it actually got very hurt by a lot of the main deck destroy evils and a lot of the main deck counter spells that have become popular in Esper and Grixis, respectively. Because it's all about slamming bigger mid-range threats. Back when Mono Black or uh, Invoke Despair decks were more popular, I think that it had a much better position. Whew. <sighs> And if Enchantments becomes the top deck du jour, then it'll be very good. Yeah, I could turn on the delay, but I'm going to be entirely honest. I woke up and had like 10 minutes to start the stream before I had to be in the draft. So I didn't have time to set anything up. <laughs> so instead, we're not doing that. Let's see, let's see. Moving on. Moving on. We might just be ready to go. Black bar to have a hand. Eh, I can throw that up if I think somebody's ghosting me. I would mostly just hope people are more respectful than that. I'm more worried about myself not getting an advantage than denying anybody else an advantage. That's the only reason that I ever really put on a delay anyway. But... You raise a slightly good point in that I should uh, put in the stream title. Uh, 
that I am not going to be reading the chat during the actual matches. Ooh, all right. Let's jump in. I mean, I generally assume most people wouldn't stream tonight. It's only like maybe 1% of people, I think, are that immoral. Probably. Maybe I'm wrong on that. I try to have faith in humanity generally. I find that to be a more entertaining and enjoyable way to go through life. Uh, well, this certainly casts a lot of spells in the opening hand. And has one of our three payoffs for the domain that we don't have. So, all right, why not? Contaminated Aquifer, not a land that actually helps our whole domain thing, but does let us cast spells, and for that I am appreciative. Do we trade the splats? I don't have a lot else that I can hope to do with the splats. Although the splats also works with cut down later on. So maybe we ignore the 2 2. Maybe you just take some damage. What's the worst that could happen? My opponent turns out to be an aggressive deck where that damage costs me? Not really getting anything out of the Gaia's Might currently. I can block Steel Crusher, cut down Badger after damage. Essence Scatter, their next creature. I think I value that more than developing the Scavengers this turn. Since I think opponent's really likely to be playing a creature on curve here. If they play a removal spell on Splatter Goblin, then I'm sad. Ooh, not attacking with the Bog Badger? Oh, that's even better for me. Now I'm not even taking damage. I get to prevent all of this damage. We still get to shrink the Boggy Badger to cut downable range. We still get to Essence Scatter their Root Walla. All right. Splatter Goblin. Doing work. And then we need a green source. Put one card on top of the library. All right. Put the forest on top. I wish I could put both on top. But here we are. Oh, and my opponent's not doing anything? All right, I'm off to a clearly very lucky morning. Uh, yeah, I'll play the air knot. I can kick Vine Mage Prodigy next turn. Uh, maybe I should have kicked the Prodigy using the logic that it's more likely to get me able to cast the Sojourner this turn if I do it that way. Let's see. Kick Prodigy first, then hit with Nail after. Yeah, get that. Get that wonderful white source. Love to see it. Do we attack with Scavengers and actually start trying to race our opponent? I've got Gaia's Might active for four colors. Got a fairly reasonable blocker anyway. They can just trade with scavengers. Yeah, I think we just serve up. Opponent trades off with my 3-2. I'm probably okay with that, considering the 3-2 is not the part of this whole equation that I yeah, I don't care about. Choice between land number six. Which I'm not, like, super excited about, or Geyser, which at some point I am excited about, given that my opponent's missing land drops and is limited on how many things they can play per turn. I mean, next turn I'm probably playing Sojourner or Gaia's Might. Although, I guess I'm not playing Gaia's Might if my opponent doesn't have the capacity to play anything. Mm, I mean, none of these are actually good. Joint Exploration... I guess I can take Joint Exploration. We play a Sojourner. I kind of feel like these choices don't matter, and I'm both mostly just going to kill the opponent with what's on board. 
Okay, so what did we learn about the opponent? Basically nothing. From the inclusions in their deck, they appear to be aggressive and enlisty. In that case, Talarian Geyser could hypothetically be a card that I don't love. Uh, not Talarian Geyser, Academy Wall can be a card that I don't love, which I could hypothetically replace with Hexbane Tortoise. Snare Spinner, also a card that might not be that interesting in a green-red opponent. Although we don't really know how many other colors our opponent was trying to play. In fact, they were actually playing Root Wallow, which implies they're probably trying to play other colors, doesn't it? Eh, I don't know. Let's run it back. Okay, well, this is kind of too many three drops, but I'm not going to throw away a hand with four lands. Interesting. Terror is very interesting. Still only two colors from the opponent, so they could be on Root Walla with no other lands, or they could still be missing land drops again. There's more colors of mana. Okay, so still no black mana here. I could take Bog Badger, which is just a three drop. <sighs> Can't really block Root Walla with it regardless. But I don't really want to take any of the lands either. Maybe I do? Maybe I do want to take the lands. Do I have anything in my deck that requires double green? No, so I don't care that much. Although, two green spells in a turn. I'm kind of debating if I want to take the Tangled Islet and then kick Joint Exploration to try to get the Terror out faster. But I'm a little scared by that idea. I think I'm just supposed to play three drops for the time being. Which probably means playing Scavenger. I think I just take the land and do my best to not miss land drops. Play out the scavengers, expect that I'm not able to block the root walla. You cost, what, minus three right now, so five? That's probably reasonable. Uh, well, I'm supposed to take Geyser to make Terror cheaper, though? No, probably not. Oh, you may put one. Oh, so I could have chosen nothing if I wanted to try to find a black source. No attack. Interesting. Good for me. Bad for me. Hard to say. I'd rather play Sojourner than Terror next turn, in all likelihood, which I think means playing Scavengers. Let's represent having a single pump spell up. Black source over tapped red source. Yes, almost certainly. Oh, War Brute kind of a problem here. Attacks as a five power creature. We just ignore that. Probably. Probably just ignore that. Uh, 
I should have a slightly difficult time handling a 4-6. That's the hope. You can attack with Baldwin Berserkers as a 4-power creature. If they do, I can trade off both scavengers for it. Is that what we want to do? Maybe? Probably better to trade off both scavengers than to trade off the sojourner. It's a little time. Don't want to play Namada here. If the opponent finds a punch spell, they can remove anything with Gardener. The alternative is Terror. The opponent can swing with a six power Coalition Warbrute, which trades with Sojourner, in which case. I believe I would like to play Namada so I can also play Joint Exploration rather than play the Terror. I don't think playing the Terror denies them any onboard attacks in a meaningful way. If they find a removal spell, they get incentivized to kill the Namada and then attack with the Rulik. But... Absent some trick from hand, my expectation is they attack with the War Brute, enlisting the Rulik, trade with the Sojourner, I get a 1-1. One, one. I don't think the Root Walla gives them any openings. They're certainly hovering over stuff like they want to cast spells, though, which scares me. Because I don't want them casting spells. We've done a lot of digging. We know the bottom at least seven cards of our deck aren't herd migration. Oh, opponent's doing so much math. That's scary. <laughs> All right, what do you got for me, opponent? They make the attack that I figured would be most likely if they don't have anything. Does that mean they don't actually have anything? No. This doesn't make sense. Why not attack? Yeah, I think this was wrong. Couldn't they have attacked with both? Enlist the root walla? Oh well, I take two. They're definitely playing like a domain deck that has not managed to find domain in either game. Just looking at the cards they have. Oh, cut down. Only really gets rid of a root walla. Well, well, I guess that actually triggers Namada. Am I interested in that? Huh. So Terra's gonna be five mana. If I cast cut down, it's four mana. Not enough to snare spinner either way. I definitely don't want the wall. I don't know whether I want the cut down. Or if I want to dig deeper towards herd migration. But I need an untapped land to cast herd migration anyway. I think the cut down with Namada is worthwhile enough that I should keep it. Ooh, Trippy Turbor is also cool eventually. Should I cut them off Gardener rather than a Root Walla?
Makes punch effects weaker, denies them mana. Hmm. Probably? Alright. I'm gonna regret this if they end up top decking a, another source of domain to get these root wallas up to five fives. But for the moment, I don't think I'm scared of four four root wallas. Tribute to Urborg kicked should be capable of killing just about anything here. Think I'm willing to trade Terror with Warbrute? Probably. Maybe not. Taking six would kind of suck, though. Going down to five. I guess I have Namada who functions something like life gain. Okay, well, that makes my blocking decisions easier. Alright, I don't have to make blocking decisions if the opponent doesn't do anything. I don't want to necessarily use my green mana, given that I need that for Namada. Do I want to just hold up Tribute? Kicked to kill the Warbrute if they attack with it? I might be better off just playing the turtle and holding up non-kicked tribute. I think I'd rather hold up tribute or Namada activation rather than play out the snare spinner, but I am still pretty gated on green sources here. More Root Wallace. Opponent's got the weirdest non-domain domain deck. I don't think I'm supposed to tribute a root walla here? Uh, I don't think I'm supposed to do anything with Codex either. We got Turtle Scry action. If the opponent keeps doing nothing. If they attack with War Brute, I can still double block with Terror Turtle, and then if they have some sort of pumpy response, I contribute. Try to get a two for one that way. Otherwise, they just accept trade with Terror. I don't know that that would seem good for them when I've got the Namada in play. So I think if they had an attack, they would. Given that they weren't already willing to trade the War Brute with Terror on previous turns, I think that that's pretty obviously not what they would go for. Currently, Codex activation costs two, so I can't play it and draw immediately next turn. This is the point at which opponent feels pressured to do something. Yes. What if I just put Sapperling Turtle Snare Spinner in front of it? They kill Turtle Sapperling. Am I okay with that? They clearly want the terror off the board. I think they're more afraid of the 5-5 five five than they are of anything else. 
I think this might do a better job of getting a hypothetical pump spell out of him than blocking with the terror. And I really want them to try to use a combat trick on that war brute right now. Perfect. Bye-bye. I will take my two and a half for one. Thank you. Ooh, hey, that's a cool card. All right, do we start attacking? No, I don't think so. Oh, but if I play Nail, then I can't represent Namata activation, and that's not great. I think I'd actually rather play the Codex and just pass with the Namata activation up, even if I can't draw with... Wait. Oh, I can draw with Codex. Oh, okay. I forgot about the Swamp. All right. Dirtles continue. Oh, my Codex. All right, well, Dirtles continue. I think I'd rather kick Vine Shaper Prodigy at this point than play the Nail. Just try to find that herd migration. Just try to find that herd migration. Hold up turtle activation. Chill. I don't have great attacks for as long as they have up root wall of mana. They don't. Basically, I can only ship with Terror, and that just results in them double-blocking with three threes. Maybe in that case I'm just supposed to play Nail? If I had more green sources, I could attack with Namada. Do I have any instant speed anything? I have one Gaia's Might left in the deck. That would make things easier to attack with. I'm not really willing to trade off Terror for a single 3-3. And I... Well, do I want a Herd Migration for 4? We do get to attack with all of those 3-3s every single turn. I probably want to do that. Not attacking this turn, but now we can attack next turn. So, a Rootwalla eats a 3-3. Yeah. Wow, yeah, they are like the dedicated domain deck with no domain payoff at all. Or, well, all the payoffs, none of the enablers, I guess. All right, so... If I swing with Terror and all the beasts, do they just not block? I kind of think they might just not block. They take 12, 19, go to 1. I have 6... Seven, eight blockers on the back. Yeah, that's probably fine. Well, they don't go to one, because they get one free block, so they go to four. But still probably fine. Jumping? Okay. It, trade blocks, but I, 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 Pony, you remember that I'm getting sapperlings from this, right? This don't work. This don't work good for you at all. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we kill Rootwalla. We kill Rootwallas. I would rather kill the thing with Menace. This feels pretty good for me. We play Nail. Don't think I care much about playing out Tide Turner. We just hold up Essence Scatter and Tide Pool Turtle Activation, looking for that Gaia's Might. Being gated by a single green source is a little annoying. Makes it kind of tricky to attack with the Namada. Do I take a second green source? Represents it being a 5, 7, 8? How do they block a 7, 8? Outrider. 
they go outright a root walla. I pump once and kill the Outrider. Meaning I don't actually need the second forest to enable that attack anyway. Except if I can't represent the second pump. They just block with Rootwalla Steel Crusher. And then I only eat the Rootwalla and not the Outrider. Now, I think I'm actually looking for the Gaia's Might. Yeah, find a forest anyway. Huh. Alright, well, I guess I'm still just waiting on more green sources then? I can't really attack until I find more green sources or a Gaia's Might. They can't really attack either. Am I willing to scatter a 3-3? Do I care about a 3-3 enough to scatter it? Or do I want to scatter something bigger, like another Outrider? I think I let that resolve. Turtle Scry, looking for Gaia's Mitre Forest. That's neither of those things. Turtle Scry. That's neither of those things. Gaia's Might. Oh, cool. And now I know most of my deck. Oh, Bog Badger. That'll be valuable. Okay, so... Do I attack with Nail and just try to Gaia's Might to kill the Outrider and then start representing two damage in the air every turn? Probably. Yeah, I don't know that you could ever not block opponent. You have a removal spell? My life gets hard if you have a removal spell. Colossal Growth, non-kicked. Where does that put us? Oh, wait, is kicked? Oh, shoot. I thought they only had two mana. Huh, okay. Well, that's annoying. I don't know if it's actually, like, a long-term problem, but it is a short-term problem of... I do have to make sure to kill them. I only have, like, five spells left in my deck. I'm going to need a lot of green sources. This is getting dangerously close to beyond my capacity to actually win. I really needed to kill that Outrider. Okay. Still not worth SM scattering that. Is it worth drawing the Splatter Goblin? I don't want to scry a non-land to the bottom. Hmm. I have no way to sacrifice the Splatter Goblin, either. Yeah, we might be decking out this game. Rada. Is that actually scary? It is more three threes. Hmm. 
I'm never worried about the opponent attacking for the rest of the game. I'm going to Essence Scatter this, because I don't think I can handle my opponent having a board that's any larger than this, but that might just be a mistake. <sighs> so what happens if I kick Bog Badger and swing with everything right now? I have Nomada Activation for one. I'm not anywhere close to doing lethal. How many untapped green sources do I have left in the deck? Two forests, which are down there. Okay, so I can't scry into untapped green sources anytime soon, which means I just have to settle for tapped green sources. to 17. Okay. There should be plenty of time. A lot more green sources. Talarian Geyser removing Rootwalla? I mean, that's definitely useful eventually. Is he useful this turn? Probably. I don't think we want to get rid of Outrider. Because I don't want them replaying Outrider. Maybe I do. Maybe I just want them spending all that mana. That only doesn't accomplish anything. Okay, so if we swing with Namada, it is plus six, plus six. It's a nine, ten. They have no way to block it without taking a huge amount of damage. What happens if I swing with all the 3-3s, three the 2-1, and the Namada? They quadruple block Namada. Eat 1-3-3, three, three, take 5. Okay. Is that fine? It's probably fine. I can't swing with the 1-1s, because then they can just block the 1-1s, force me to pump the Namada while they leave the Namada unblocked. Mm-hmm. 3-3 three, three gets blocked. Branch Rider on Namada. Are they just chumping Namada? No. Quadruple block on Namada? What? Oh, this has an ability. Five, seven. Oh, okay. Okay. Sure. Fair enough. With enough to pump it twice so they kill them no matter what by only killing two creatures off? Alright, that's moderately annoying. I will absolutely sack two sapperlings to kill a bog badger. I think I might just be incapable of beating this 4-4 though. And they've got two four fours. Hmm. 
Hmm. Guess I have one more bog badger. All right, well, if we're not going for it this turn, then when are we ever going for it? How does the math on this work out? Don't know, don't have the time to figure out. Block, block, take three, six, 11, go to one, go to one? Go to one, huh? What if I put them to two instead and hold back two blockers? Kill Badger, Steel Crusher, represent and tack back for eight. No. No, I, I can I can hold back one. I think it's fine if I hold back one. Oh, okay, sure. Yeah, this only results in me killing one thing. That's reasonable. Forces them to pump the root walla, but they can probably live with that. Mm-hmm. Down to two. Two blockers. Much wide lethal on the back swing. Bog badger good. All right, I'm gonna assume that maybe we just didn't need to answer the 4-4 ever. All right, I'm I kind of thought we weren't going to get that for a little bit there. <laughs> Forgot to scry. Uh, we'd actually been through the entire deck, so <laughs> I did forget to scry. It just so happened that Academy Wall was actually the most valuable card in my entire deck. <laughs> All right, opponent wins the dice roll. No. We, I mean, this isn't a mulligan, but especially on the draw, it's definitely not what I would consider a defensive hand. Bone of mulligans, we like that. We take those. Now, how about we just draw cut down, ideally. Cut down and then essence scatter. That'd be perfect. Opponent mulligans to five. Oh, this is gonna hurt when we lose anyway. Uh. All right, okay. You know what, an academy wall, that's like a magic card that blocks aggressive cards. Opponent not playing anything. We will take. I don't really want a joint exploration on two here. I could, I guess. I'm kind of thinking that I want to wait on it to block the academy wall. Ooh. All right, opponent. That's an adorable way to deny me some cards and to undo your mulligan. Well played. I don't even know that I think of myself as favored anymore. Okay, well, that was not the greatest for them. 
<sighs> I could jam Namada here into what I have to admit feels a little bit like the opponent has a destroy evil. Maybe. We can test that, actually. Go to combat. Opponent has priority for something. Destroy evil or a pump spell would make the most sense. Do I want to let them destroy evil than Amada? They're going to pump both of those, attack with the Herbalist for free. I could joint exploration and Gaia's Might the Wall try to get them to destroy evil the wall when it blocks the Herbalist. If I joint exploration, putting the forest into play, that gets Delarian Terror down to five, then we play the Terror. Eats up the mana on their turn, lets me loot away some stuff. I think I like that better than playing Namada. Scry to the top. Kick the joint exploration. Draw a card. Get rid of Aquifer, I guess. Do I want any of this? I don't necessarily not want any of this, but... I also think that I just want herd migration more than any of this. Oh, I kind of want Snare Spinner a little bit, in case they remove Nomada, so I have an answer to the 2-2. Two -two. Maybe? Maybe I just care about that less than Herd Migration? My life's at 20. Eh, I don't know. And we are doing some turbo digging right now, anyway. Oh, this is only once per turn? Wow. Huh, that's kind of surprising. So they decided not to destroy that particular evil, which leaves me with the question of if they have destroy evil, would I rather them kill the Terror or the Namada? I believe the answer is probably that I would rather them kill the Terror. That could be incorrect, however. Nope, destroy evil. Okay, good to know. What else does that make that? Uh, unsure. Hmm. All right, play Namada. Still priority. Plus two, minus two? Auto Tapper did work hard to keep the red up for them. They opt not to trade the Phalanx. Do we have an incentive to hold up green here? I don't think so. We'll get our domain active. No attacks. Opponent representing double block on terror. Am I willing to trade terror for phalanx in this position? Kind of likely that they have some sort of pump spell. I think that I am comfortable dirtling.
and not swinging this turn. I believe that a dirtily game favors me anyway. Holding onto the lands, because I can loot them away with wall. More brute, sure. Scry. Land's not so good. Do we just take the natural draw? Yeah, because we could draw a seven drop. Oh, okay. Find Shaper Prodigy is a cool magic card. Oh no! This is a, a lot of cool magic cards. Hmm, I wanna just have all of these. Tolarian Geyser, the 2-2, two, two, feels pretty good. We draw the card. We don't get a 1-1 one, one off of it, though. Get a 1-1 one, one off of cut downing it. Card's probably worth more than a 1-1. One, one. Nail strong, but not necessarily guaranteed to get through if we can't stop it. I mean, nail's real strong. I'm just a little worried about what happens if we take the nail and then they just answer it. Doesn't loot either. We're probably going to find something off the turtle. What does this mean? They're willing to trade for... something? What if it just takes seven, go to nine, opponent? Are we wiping the board? I'm a little worried about what happens if I triple block. I mean, I guess if I triple block and they just kill one thing, first strike would be annoying, but then at least the first strike's out of the way. Could be a problem. Eh, could be a problem. But I can't really sit here and take it because I'm not in a better position next turn either. <laughs> so it's kind of gotten to the point where I think I do want this colossal growth and this hex being tortoise against most decks apparently. Uh, Snare Spinner actually did look kind of useful if my opponent has Love Song of Day and Night. Academy Wall, moderately interesting, although slightly less so against a deck that looks like a pretty dedicated enlisted deck, but again, we only saw a single Coalition War Brute, so who's to say that that's the case for sure? Tide Turner I'm probably less interested in. Mm, I don't know if that could be the case. When bringing in Colossal Growth, I think I still need Tide Turner as, like, a body that we're allowed to target. Do I get rid of the Academy Wall? It did do a lot of work. I kind of feel like maybe I get rid of the Academy Wall and maybe I get rid of either Impulse or Joint Exploration. I'm not sure which I'd rather get rid of. 
probably joint exploration. Hypothetically makes the terror slightly worse, but that's fine. Now we have more actual interaction. Do I like Codex? I'm not actually sure I like Codex against the opponent's deck. I should probably cut Codex for wall. I say probably. I have no idea, but on the draw against an aggressive deck does not feel like where I want Codex very much. Oh, it's so many good cards. I just wish I had more mana than one. That's so many not good cards, and I can't even cast the geyser, but I'm not willing to go to five, so we'll just top deck it. It'll be fine. Keep. Get rid of Wooded Ridge. We're going to play Geothermal Bog on turn one, which is our red source already anyway. All right. Well, we have the Blue Land. That's something. We have the Academy Wall, which is quite a bit better than Joda's Codex here. By a lot. Even though I have Domain, because now I can actually play something on three, which is good. But we're still probably going to get run over. Okay, this indicates no pump spell to me. I guess if the pump spell is plus three, they probably still would have gone wide like this and then just expected me to block the bigger one and then killed me and did one more point of damage. So that doesn't necessarily mean no pump spell, really. And we can kick Talarian Geyser if we don't draw into anything else that's meaningful. I'd rather prefer to draw a nail if possible. Mm. Love song of day and night. I don't think I'm going to get to draw cards this time. No. So we are going to bounce the birdie. Draw a card. Loot away a land. Draw a card. More land. Opponent can attack with a five power cavalier. That's a problem. Want a blocker for that soon. Flyer. We have a snare spinner for that. Oh, hey, cool. We top decked a blocker. We top decked a blocker that loots. So they have to play a creature to get the Griffin Protector through the Snare Spinner. Which does not leave them much in the way of mana for combat tricks. Potentially. They could certainly have combat tricks. But if they pump the Griffin Protector, then I kind of just ignore it, take my three, block the Cavalier, Gaia's Might, try to kill the Cavalier. Flowstone Kavu pumps the Griffin Protector. Combat. Swings with both. Between these two, I would probably rather kill the Cavalier than the Protector. Draw a card. Loot away a land. because they have to keep playing a creature every single turn for that Griffin Protector to be meaningful. Otherwise, it just can't attack through the Snare Spinner. Let's play a Scavengers. Look at the top five. 
da -da 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 -da. are any of these cards good? Unfortunately, all of them are. And I have to put some of them back. I'd rather have a 4-6 or a 3-4 Reacher. I would probably rather have the 3-4 Reacher. Then let's play a turtle. And chill. Now we want to find herd migration. That is the desire. If our opponent attacks with Kavu... Oh, I can just block with Wall plus Scavengers. Interesting. Interesting. So they have a pump spell for the protector. Which is fine because I'm about to play the Namada anyway. I think this makes this still the set of blocks. I do get a snare spinner trigger, right? This has an ability that happens? Oh, they're ordering blocks before the trigger happens. Got it. So if they do plus two plus two and untap both of them, I don't kill the Kavu. They two for one me, but then pump spell's gone and Namada's protected, which is still a desire. Heroic charge. Okay. Yeah, that's also very good. Basically the same thing as the plus two plus two, except I also got a heroic charge out of their hand though. But the opponent's got a lot of cards left and a deck that has an incentive to play a lot of combat tricks. And I am out of fuel. Bad sign of things to come. A very bad sign. All right. Ah, gosh, I wish I had that tribute of Urborg last turn or the turn before. Okie dokie. I don't know how to handle this flowstone kavu with all of my board gone. I might have to tribute the Griffin Protector and then hope to top deck herd migration. Do I keep Splatter Goblin that doesn't really trade with anything other than Cavalier? Knowing that that makes me incapable of top decking herd migration? We know the bottom. way more than four cards of our deck, actually. Oh, no, 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 wait. This is what we put on the bottom from the scry. So we know the bottom five. 
So there's like 17 unknown cards. Uh, it's not a very good odds of a herd migration. I think I still gotta get rid of Splatter Goblin. If I don't get rid of Splatter Goblin, I, I think I have to top deck herd migration to win this game. So I think I just keep the untapped land in hand so that if I do top deck herd migration, I can play it. Because odds are I'm dead next turn. I'm going to six here. Oh no, they have a two drop they want to play? Lightning strike the wall. Okay, herd migration off the top. Nope, okay. We did a lot of digging, but eh, we found every other card except herd migration, so I suppose that's not really that surprising. So opponent on that many combat tricks. Does that make me like turtle less? And like the Codex more? Wall was actually pretty impressive there. I don't necessarily want to get rid of that. But having creatures at all is good. Hmm... No, I don't think we are Codex gamers here. We will take the play. <sighs> two draw steps to hit a land. The first one can only hit a tap land. No two drops. Chances to draw into two drops of which... Blue and black do cast all of the two drops we could draw into. If we do draw a third land and start casting scavengers, we're not horribly far off. It's not a very good hand. Do we think the average six is better? Not really. No. I think this is a keep, but it's not an exciting keep. Okay, well, that's a playable two-drop. Doesn't do much, but it's castable. Blocks Goblin Picker. Hey, all right. Land and begin the digging process for lands. Look at the top X. You may put one of those cards on top, put the rest on the bottom in a random order. So decline? Put both on bottom. I believe that works. If they attack with Goblin Picker, which do I block with here? They're not gonna. Oh, Gaia's Might is good, but the green sources are gonna kill me! Green source on top. Can I draw that this turn? Maybe? No? Okay. So they're going to pump Balduvian Berserker. I think I just have to take the three. I don't have any way to block it that isn't a two for one, and I'm just not willing to take that two for one. I am very willing to take that two for one with an Amada, but no capacity to protect the Amada. So Nomada's probably going to die to a removal spell if it's my first play. Last time they killed Nomada with Herloon thingy. I could try to sandbag the Nomada until I have another green source, but that's so unlikely. Do I just have to play the Nomada and hope that I get a turn's reprieve? I think that's a gamble I'm required to take from this position. Nope. 
Do I have to try to race now? I can't accept this two for one. I think I'm on plan race, try to get there with Gaia's Might, which actually punishes me for not attacking with the scavenger last turn. Okay, cutdown's amazing. Cutdown's very, very amazing. Hate that my opponent gained a bunch of life off of their battle hymn, though. So we can cut down the Balduvian Berserker in response to the Enlist ability this turn. They ping my face for one, put me down to nine. Lose if they have charge? Well, not lose. They just fizzle cut down. I take four in the air, down to eight, plus... Oh, gosh, so much. Oh, what's the wording on enlist? If they pump a creature in response to enlist, does it then also pump the enlisting creature? Is the enlist pump set before probably is checks power on resolution so it would be three plus four is seven plus four is eleven i go to one backswing is ten plus three is thirteen oh that's not good enough I don't know how I beat Heroic Charge here. I could just not use the cutdown if I'm scared of Heroic Charge. Okay, this doesn't scare me though. If they had enlisted the Berserker with Heroic Charge, that'd be one thing. Okay, so you're gonna what? Pay the ward cost to kill the turtle? I'm fine with that. Cavalier, which I cut down. <sighs> Do we think we hold back the Tide Turner here? Probably. Do I have anything that incentivizes me to play this land out? Not particularly. Still, I don't have anything I think that incentivizes me to hold it other than bluffing. I don't know, maybe I should have attacked with that Tide Turner last turn. Put them to nine, that might be a big deal here. So we assume they don't have heroic charge, otherwise their attacks last turn don't make sense. I can put Badger on Picker easily. If I put Tide Turner on the 1-1, one, one, and if I don't, we go to 7. Or we take... 
Seven go to one, which is fine. Gaia's Might's currently plus three, plus three, so the one damage from the Tide Turner actually is the difference on the backswing. But we know the opponent has at least one plus one plus one indestructible and lifelink, so putting the Bog Badger on the Goblin Picker is risky in that sense. In that case, if they attack with everything, Bog Badger on the one one, Tide Turner on the two two, heroic charge results in both dying. Scaly, scaly, scaly. How much do you cost? Two, three less? So four? So not playable. In fact, neither of these are playable this turn, but I could take Ridgeline to be another pump for Gaia's Might. If I do that, swings with everybody, plus four means if two go unblocked, we have lethal, provided they don't have flowstone infusion. So they have to block two goblin picker on one, double block on another. Eh, you know what? I think that's probably the take. It's probably ridgeline. Oh, do I hold back with Tide Turner? Probably. Yeah, the picker on the scavenger. Makes sense. They're representing five damage on the back swing, so if they kill my sea scavenger with a flowstone infusion, I get one block, I'm still fine. They block with Berserker on the Scavenger. Then I could Gaia's Might to save one of my Scavengers. Is that what I want to do? Dead to heroic reinforcements, is that right? Yeah, very dead to heroic reinforcements. Or, uh, heroic charge. No way around that. Yeah, I think we saved the scavengers with the might. Pumping this one so that they have to throw the Baldivian Berserker at the Scavengers if they want to kill it. Ah, they throw it in my face. Bad sign. Lightning Strike's lethal. Lightning Strike was already lethal. Charge was lethal. Charge is already lethal. Ah, the attack with the 1-1's one a bad sign. Yeah. I don't know. Did I have any choices that did anything about that in any way whatsoever? At what point in this game could I have made a different decision? 
the cut down turn. Oh, shoot, that's not what I wanted to press. Could have answered the 2 1 flyer on the cut down turn before it damaged me, taking two less damage overall. Opponent would have had a 2 2 in Lister, which might have actually been fine comparatively. Maybe that was the biggest mistake. Well, no next draft for me. Could have played Impulse with the 1-3. Didn't we impulse? We top decked impulse and played it immediately, right? Oh, we could have cast impulse using the one three. Yeah. Maybe? I think that that's. I don't think in the blind that could be correct. We had no way of knowing we were going to hit a bunch of four drops we wouldn't be able to cast. Missed around 7 damage by not attacking, not blocking. Uh, we missed 1 damage by not attacking with the 1 power creature on a turn that I think I should have. But that ultimately made no difference given how they blocked. I could have hypothetically then also attacked with the 1-1. One, one. I think there was definitely a turn where not attacking with the 1-1 one, one was a mistake, but I don't think that it ended up costing us anything either. Yeah, I think we would have been one damage short of lethal, even if I had done one more damage the turn earlier, and then had gotten to attack with the 1-3 on our final turn as, as well. Doing that would have let you cast Nail. Yeah, but, like... I think we still lose that game to, like, all of the same cards if we cast Nail. Guys might the turtle after they paid Ward. Uh, we couldn't, right? We only had cut down up. Missed two attacks with a 3-2. But I didn't miss two attacks. I chose not to take the two attacks. And then they ended up playing things that... made us decide after the fact that we wanted to have not attacked. I don't know if in the moment we had the information to figure out whether not attacking was correct. I do agree that if I had wound up attacking, it would have been better but that was partially based on what the opponent did. And I'm not sure if in the moment I was supposed to attack there or not. Given what they played, it was correct of me to not block. I don't recall in the position whether or not that was guaranteed. Because, let's see, what was it? Was it in List Creatures? Yeah, that was the game they had the Enlister that dies and pings things, right? And keeping back the 3-2 did force them to make an Enlist attack? Uh, maybe that's... Still wrong. I mean, the way they played it, yeah. I, I wish I had attacked in that position. Do we know that for sure? I guess if I'm going to respect pump spells, I didn't really think I was capable of racing, but then we top decked. What did we top deck that made it okay to race? We top decked the green source? Is that what happened? No, because it was the turn after we played the Namada. Oh, right, 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 that's what happened. We played Namada, and I chose not to attack with a 3-2 because I wanted to trade off with a 3-2 and hope that they didn't realize that Namada exiles their creature so they wouldn't get the death trigger. But what happens is I held the 3-2 back to block, and then they killed the Namada at the end of my turn. Or on their upkeep? One of the two. Or on their main phase. And then, with Namada being dead, the 3-2 being held back to block was bad. And I was playing around Namada not dying because I thought that if Namada died, I was going to lose the game anyway, so I should just play best if Namada survives. But then whatever we card we top-decked the turn after Namada died made it reasonable for us to actually try to win a race. 
I don't remember what card that was. But that was the context in which I made the original decision. If nothing else, we needed to attack with the scavenger the turn we cast the second scavenger. Yeah, that's probably true. I was probably being way too defensive at that point. Kept the scavenger back to block, and then realized that blocking was terrible in that position because it was a two-for-one. Yeah, so that's three missed damage for sure. Which, together with the one missed damage later on, probably was the difference between winning or losing that game. I think it wasn't even a top deck card. I, uh, I don't remember what it was, but I feel like I top decked something the turn after Namada died that made me go, oh, okay, wait, I can actually potentially raise them. I just have no clue what it was. It was the cut down, cut, yeah, 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 that's what you mean by cut down. Top decking the cut down was what made me think that I had a chance. Better than this? Oh, no, I'm not better than anything. I made, let's see, not actually all three of my entries back, but I got 2,500 twice, and then 5,000 once. So I only spent 5,000 gems in total? That's not a huge loss. Yeah, so the reason I didn't cut down the Mesa Cavalier is that I was worried that my opponent had heroic charge, and if I cut down anything and they heroic charged in response, I was just instantly dead. But at the same time, I might have just been losing that game to heroic charge no matter what. So maybe I was just supposed to play it more aggressively and be willing to lose the cut down to heroic charge. That's a little unclear, huh? Hmm. Well, definitely been a while since I've gotten a practice draft. I am still rusty at it. And since I'm not going to be doing the third draft, are the odds of winning money lower with the new system? I'm not sure exactly what the new draft system looks like compared to the old one. The odds of winning money are never, like, particularly good. Didn't draw the migration either. Drawing the migration would have actually been kind of funny. I think I would have been stuck on green mana in all likelihood the last turn. Oh, no, wait. If the impulse had hit the migration, would I have been able to win by gaining three life with it? That's a possibility. No, heroic charge must have put me way deader than that. Oh, and I also had to use the pump spell anyway. Well, I could have chosen not to use the pump spell and just accepted the trades. Huh. Yeah, that's definitely a possibility that that might have actually worked. Would also have considered cut down at sorcery speed. Um, yeah, just kill the one three at sorcery speed so it can't enlist. Have the 1-3 to block the 2-2. Two, two. Take one damage from that. The upside of waiting is that if they enlist, I could choose to do it in response to the enlist, but I got scared about pump spells, so I probably wasn't going to do that anyway. In which case, the sorcery speed cut down on the enlister actually just winds up being best. Or heck, I could even just ignore the enlister, kill the flyer, and try to race with everything. Yeah, that might have been best. That might have been way better. <laughs> 